Okay friends, if you've been following me for any point of time, then you know that I talk about UTM codes all of the time and how crucial they are for my TPT seller business. But maybe you're sitting here going, what's a UTM code? Why do I need to do it? How do I do it? Where do I find them? And so in this video today, we are gonna be talking all about how to use UTM codes to help you in your Teachers Pay Teacher Seller business. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. For those who don't know me, my name is Rainy Barton. I'm an elementary music teacher and a middle school musical theater teacher in Central Florida. I also am a teacherpreneur productivity mentor. So I help teacher sellers master their time and energy while scaling their business so that they can ditch the hustle and grind, break up with busy, and stop sacrificing their mental health. And so on this channel, we talk all things teacher seller tips and productivity tips. Those productivity is Sunday, teacher seller is Wednesday, and the whole goal is to help you work less and make more. So if that is something that you are interested in sticking around with on this channel, then click subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can know when new videos come out on Sundays and Wednesdays. And with that, we're gonna hit the ground running and talk all about UTM codes. What even are UTM codes? UTM codes are basically a customized or personalized URL that TPT allows you to create so that you can track where your sales are coming from. Like more than just knowing, oh, they came from TPT, you could tell they came from a specific blog post, a specific YouTube video, a podcast episode, now on Instagram from a link that you put in the stickers app that we have, which I'm super excited about that. And it just allows you to see where your sales are coming from to let you know where to focus your efforts. Like for example, when you're gonna be seeing some screenshots of mine in a few minutes, I know that a lot of my sales are coming from my YouTube channel now. That is a big contender for me. And when I write blog posts, which I'm not as consistent with blogging right now, but YouTube is just my main content. When I do create, um, when I create those, I have a lot better conversion rate. And so UTM codes are really helpful to me because they allow me to see where my sales are coming from. And then if I'm never making sales, for example, from my blog posts, then that means I might either, either need to reconsider the wording that I'm using or just take a deep dive into like what's wrong with my blog post. Why would they not be converting? Because if you're creating content or something that is not serving your business well, which you can find out through UTM codes, then we need to either revise it or scrap it entirely because we do not have time to be doing stuff that is not ultimately moving our business forward. Now in a minute, we're going to actually show you and walk you through how to create a UTM code. And I'm going to show you like the importance and the value of actually using UTM codes. But essentially all that a UTM code makes up of is you go and get the product listing, like the actual URL, you plug that in, you decide, you name it what you want it to be. So maybe it's going to be for your YouTube, your blog post, your Instagram, and then you actually type an actual title for the UTM. So let's say for example, that I was doing a YouTube video on fall music lessons and I had this product in there. I would go fall music lessons, YouTube, pumpkin soul fetch game. That way I know that that is the product that I was selling and that is the video that it came from. And then when I see that in my UT, my traffic report on TPT, I can go, oh, it was actually that video and I sold three units of that. So I know that I did a really good job talking about it in that video. I need to probably create another video like that and create more resources like that because people are interested in it. So UTM codes are really helpful. Now I just want to say the disclaimer that yes, they're not always accurate. And like some people are like, I just don't like UTM codes. I don't think they're valid. I think they are super valid. I've been using them for a while. I use them for everything, uh, which we're going to talk about in just a second. Where should you be using them? Uh, but I use them everywhere, all over my different content platforms in my TPT products even. And so let's talk about where you should use UTM codes. You should use UTM codes anywhere that you can. So for example, I use them in my YouTube videos. I make individualized UTM codes to put in my product or in my video descriptions underneath. I do it in my blog posts where I can say like, click here to check out the resource and the link is actually a UTM code. So I know that they came from that specific blog post over to there, which I'm gonna show examples of all of these. You could do it in emails that you send out, uh, which I am not that big at sending emails. I'm trying to be better, but I have friends that have done a really great job at making sure to send consistent emails. So that when they do UTM codes for products for like sales, for example, or things, their sales skyrocket because email is king and UTM codes really help. Uh, you can do it in Pinterest pins, which I try to do if I can remember, that's just a lot of work, um, but pins are really great. That way you can see which Pinterest pins you created that are actually like helping, you know, progress your business because Pinterest can be a really powerful tool if you're not already utilizing it. 
You can use it on Instagram now because most of us have the link sticker. So you could make a UTM link instead and know, oh wow, when people watched my story where I was talking about this product, it sold. Uh, I don't feel like that one's going to be as like valid because Instagram's kind of like wishy-washy when it comes to sales. Like I don't make a crap ton of sales from Instagram but it's still something to consider. And you can also use them, which I have done this only a couple of times uh, because I have like this tool that helps me now and it would require me overriding the tool and I bought the tool to save me time, so I don't use it. But you could use it in your related products page in your terms of use for your products. Like, you know, when you're recommending other products and you're like, I recommend these three products. Like if you like this product, you'll like these products. You could make UTM codes for those products so that when they click on them, if they buy it, you know, oh, they bought this resource of mine and they really wanted to see other resources I had and they clicked on this and bought it. Then you know that that's working and that's something that you should continue doing. If you notice that like no one's ever doing that, like after a couple of months of you consistently putting UTM codes there, then maybe I'd stop because that just feels like extra time. That's just not really helping your business. But you could put them anywhere, put them in any of those places. If you have a podcast, you could put them in the show notes. I don't have a podcast, that's why I didn't mention it. Uh, but basically, any content that you're creating and any place that you can find to put a UTM code, the better. Now I'm actually going to go onto my laptop and show you how to create a custom UR or UTM code and then the different how to do it in the different places that I've mentioned, and then we'll wrap up this video. Like I said, super short and sweet. Okay, let's talk about UTM codes. So. When you go to your dashboard, you're actually going to click over to the traffic tab and then down here is the UTM code. Now here's actually a great example of using some UTM codes. Um, so on this one, this just means that people just clicked on, in my earlier videos, I wasn't using UTM code, so they probably clicked on stuff, but I did make earnings from my YouTube, so that's great. And I made them from my blog. It doesn't say specifically where, so sometimes it's very vague. This one is not even mine. I have no idea whose it is, but it converted somehow. However, if you look down here, I have this specific UTM code that I made. Now this one didn't convert, but this one did for skin and bones. And since my product is only about 350 and I made eight, that means I sold about three of these and the conversion was 300%. So that's actually really good. And that's a good example of why I use UTM codes. I know that people really liked this video and that they bought that product specifically. So this is actually a really great example. But this is where you're going to go. You're going to go to URL Builder from here. You're going to go and get the product that you want to link first. So let's go to my store. I should have done this already. And let's just do my Hispanic Heritage Music Lessons Bundle. Why not? Okay. We're going to go over here. Link it. Okay. Then I'm going to put where I want to put this. Maybe I want to put this in a blog. Like I'm going to make a Hispanic Heritage Month blog post. So I'll put blo my blog. Then I'm going to name the campaign. So I would put top Hispanic Heritage Music Lessons blog. Hispanic bundle. And I know that I have a giant bundle. Generate URL. So then it's going to make this custom URL that I can use anywhere. Now, I like to use bit.ly to shorten links because this is the link that I'm going to want to put underneath my YouTube videos, for example. Like if you look, I have, these are all UTM codes. But if I was to type out the original one, this one, um, the link, if I was to just copy this, look how long it is. That's insanely long. I don't want to put that underneath the video. Bitly is free, so I use that. And so then if you click on any of these, it'll actually take you to that activity bundle. And if you were to buy it from that link, I would get in my traffic tab that that video had sold that specific bundle. So it's really simple to make codes, and then you can make as many codes as you need, and you just build it all over again. So that's super simple. So like I said, over on YouTube, this is what I do for that. That's how I use an example there. And then in my blog post, this is how I use it over here. Like I have, you can purchase the book bundle here and you can click on it for each individual product. I have it and you just literally click on what I talked about and it'll take you to that link. And those are all UTM codes. So I figured I'd show you a little bit more of the importance of UTM codes by going into my quarterly data and letting you see like what I've been tracking and how I can tell like UTM codes can even help me tell what products I should continue making or a product line or product different ideas. Let's go into my traffic. Now this is what I already showed you. So let's go into this quarter or yeah, this quarter with October. So that'll be good. 
Okay. So teachers by teachers is always going to be like the biggest one typically for everybody that you get money through. And so that's just that. That's how it is. Now over here, it says on YouTube, I made this much and my website, I made this much, TPT emails, AdWords, all that. All right, let's start over here. If you look, my blog, I made a Halloween children's book blog and I made a book bundle. That bundle sold. I had 13 click throughs and the bundle is probably about... I believe it's 10 bucks. And since I made about 1880, it probably means I sold about two of these. So conversion is here. Not that bad. I still sold it. And then I have my skin and bones lesson, which we showed, which that one always sells. That one's really good. And then you have ones that don't necessarily convert and that's totally fine. And then from here on out, it's just going to show a lot of stuff that didn't convert per se. But that's still good to know. It doesn't, like, for example, this one did sell. My uh, pumpkin patch one sold. But it's okay if not everything sells. I still want to know. I still want to have the UTM codes. Because if I see continually that there is a specific product that keeps getting clicked on and it's not selling, that could alert to me, oh, maybe when they went over, they didn't like the preview or they didn't like the thumbnails. And I really need to, like, edit that and fix that. So this is still good to look at whether or not... Um, whether or not I do anything with it. And then, of course, you'll get weird stuff like this, like Bing Smart Shopping and, like, stuff that doesn't have anything to do with it. But that's a really great example. If we wanted to look at, I don't know, let's do this year. That might be really good. Let's see. Okay, so this kind of shows a little bit of stuff. So it shows teachers by teachers, of course. Like, these are the typical things. And then, yeah, so my YouTube Hispanic Heritage video sold a lot there. I have the stuff that we've kind of seen. Oh, yeah, when I did this membership and I sold my video in there, that did well. Yeah, so look, these are all UTM codes that I created, and I can tell exactly which ones are working for me and which ones are not. So UTM codes are very powerful. I would definitely start using them if you are not already doing it. Now, you might say, that's not much that much money that you're actually making right there. Uh, it's more money that I would be making than if I hadn't put the URL code, the UTM code. And ultimately, my YouTube channel is designed to not only help give free value, but to sell the products. And so if I'm selling products, by just sharing what I'm doing in my classroom, I think that's a win-win for me. And that's the power of UTM codes. It's really simple, really easy to set up. So if you aren't already doing that, I would definitely start doing that in your business. I love UTM codes. They are definitely helpful when I am deciding what type of products to continue and just what type of content to keep working with. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any further questions about UTM codes or anything TPT seller related, please link it in the comments down below. And I will be seeing you on Sunday with a productivity video of some sort. And I never remember what I'm filming, so it'll just be a surprise once again. But I love you all and I will see you in the next video. Bye.